I'm Eddie Fitzgerald and I'm waiting to interview Alan Egan of Classic Vehicle Company Limited. Eddie, how are you? How are you, Alan? Pleased to meet you. Is that your Triumph GT6? It is indeed. It's my pride and joy. I think that started this all off. So we saw you pull up in your GT6 and you must be very proud of that. Yeah, that's that's my little baby. It's also now my partner in the company. It's my test bed for all of the prototype um, components that I manufacture. They so go. You, have, you, you test them on your car? They go onto my vehicle to be tested before they go to anybody else's. So Alan, you haven't actually been in this line of business all your life. So how did you actually get started? Originally, I served my time as a mechanic and an auto electrician, but work took me away from the trade and into industry for many years. My desire had always been, though, to come back to what I love doing, which is car mechanics, auto electrician work. So what exactly do you offer? I offer a full range of services. Um, originally, as classic wiring, I was solely focused on vehicle wiring. I've expanded the services now to include mechanical work, bespoke parts, manufacture, wooden dashboards, upholstery. So this has led to your name change, would it be? Because you were previously known as Classic Wiring. I'm sure a lot of people have seen the Irish Vintage scene advertised under that name. Absolutely, absolutely. The, the reasoning behind the, the name change was purely people weren't aware that I had expanded my services and I, I found the name kind of limited what people would come to me for. You do uh, cover quite a range from electrical work to mechanical work, as you say, bespoke products. And uh, you mentioned earlier on to me, SU carburetors and Stromberg. Yes, I've, I've done extensive amount of work with SU. I deal an awful lot with the manufacturers in the UK. I also can offer support and service on Stromberg. And we also bring in Weber carburetor kits. Many other makes of carburetor, really, there's, we're not limited on what we can do. I couldn't help but notice on your GT6 on the bonnet was up earlier on, extremely shiny under there. Is that polishing done by yourself and do you offer that kind of service? No, again, all the polishing is done in-house. Um, a huge amount of the components under the bonnet would have been manufactured in-house by myself. Stainless steel pipes, adapted rocker cover bolts for clearance purposes, expansion bottles, they're all done in-house. And coming back to your grassroots of the electrical, what areas of the vehicle wiring do you cover? We cover everything really from repair, fault diagnosis, right through to full bespoke wiring looms. Really we can offer any service to the client on the wiring side. And when you say replacement of wiring looms and bespoke, have you got any example there of... Um... Yeah, um, recently I, I had a Lancia Aurelia in, which required a full replacement wiring loom. Because of the rarity of the car, these, these are not available off the shelf. So we made one in-house to suit using original colour schemes, original wiring. So what would be regular visitors to your workshop car-wise? Most ma makes would come through my workshop on a fairly regular basis. DeLorean, MG, Triumph... Rover, Lotus would be another one, Porsches, um, I have had a couple of Ferraris through the workshop, large American cars, so we're, our doors are open to everybody. On all the cars that you have mentioned, what would be the main issues you find people coming in with? On the electrical side, I would say a huge majority of the problems that I see are left over from modifications that would have been made in previous years that have resulted in problems. Pop-up headlights would be a particular issue on certain models of cars. On the Lotus, it's the vacuum system. Not the most straightforward system, but it is certainly repairable. Fiat's and Triumph's would have had an electric system and Ferrari's. And they, again, can cause problems. But most of the problems I've encountered have been as a result of incorrect repairs at some stage in their past. A lot of my work is restoring the vehicles back to their original specification and just fixing the initial problem. On SAG, you would replace the fuse box, the old fuse box, which was a new, known problem on them, with a new type 
Blade fuse box was that made up by yourself? Absolutely, that... fuse boxes on that particular model are no longer available and are known as an issue. The solution to that was to replace it with a more modern unit to make the, the, the vehicle generally more reliable. I also moved it inside and underneath the glove compartment on a specially made door. Again, that stuff is all made in house. Well, onto the mechanical side, you obviously cover general basic servicing to very complex engine rebuilds and so forth. Do you actually do gearboxes, overdrives? Again, yes, we would have a full range of service and, and overhauled units that we can bring in from abroad to cover the range of cars that we do. And on certain models, we would do them in-house. They would be fully tested and, and presented back to the customer ready for use. If you look behind me, you'll see one being tested at the moment. pictures in the back of your workshop there of a bare chassis. Do you do full chassis, poly bushes, that type of thing as well? Do you bring them in? Do you supply them, fit them? Absolutely. We, we have a full range of original OE and upgraded components that we'll bring in. A lot of them we will hold in stock. EWP water pumps, electric water pumps for your vehicle. We would bring in ignition systems, um, coils, leads, uh, gas and Monroe shock absorbers, full Gerling and Lockheed brake systems and upholstery sets to mention but a few. You mentioned in-house manufacturing can you tell me more about that? Uh? Alloy components for making bespoke handbrake levers and buttons and also gear stick knobs. I think we have a video of me doing uh, gear stick knobs uh, running at the moment. All gear sticks knobs start with a basic form or blank which I then turn to the requirement of the customer. Uh, in the video currently I'm turning down the center piece which then will have a wooden inlay placed over the top of it. The options for these are various different types of wood inlay. I can inlay various different types of metals within it or plastics. The options really are down to the customer's requirements. I'm happy to sit down and discuss all the options. In this, currently I'm just turning in the centerpiece. And in a second then I will start overlaying a, wo a wooden blank which will become the centerpiece of the new gear stick knob. This section here is the aluminium blank without the wood in place. This section is now a piece of walnut which I'm turning and shaping as a central insert for the gear stick knob. Just doing a test fit to see if all the components fit together properly. Final adjustments before final assembly. Each unit is handmade to its specifically for that unit. No two are the same. It's then fitted onto the machining mandrel, ready for the ball turning to be done. Here, the ball turning attachment is fitted to the lathe, and I'm turning the central section. At this point, 
the customer can request not to have a badge groove cut in the top of the ball and for it to be left fully round. There is also an option if the customer requests that special engraving can be placed on the top of the ball to the customer's requirements. When my machining is finished and the ball is complete, it will be disassembled for polishing and for the central wooden section to be coated. There is the finished ball ready for polishing and lacquering. In this one I have turned a solid aluminium ball, polished, and then the final stage is to cut the badge groove. And insert the badge to customer's requirements. This one only requires final cleaning and then can be dispatched to the customer. Here I'm showing a polished alloy handbrake cover. Currently I'm turning a oak blank to the required size ready for machining the grooves for your handbrake. These can be done in any timber or in a combination of alloy and wood inlay and if the customer requires they can also be supplied with a matching polished alloy handbrake button. Final cleaning and prepping is done with emery paper. And then a final dust off prior to lacquer. I believe you also do dashboard, custom dashboard, probably for various makes of cars, even kit cars. Yes, the, the range of services start from repair, restoration of an original dashboard through to custom wooden dashboards to the customer's requirements. These can be done with any veneer, in any finish, and the customer would be encouraged to give me input during the course of the restoration to, to tell me exactly what they need. If you have a look at the video behind me, you'll see me doing this right. dashboard is a rework of an original one. It is stripped back and then covered in a cherry veneer. The original glove box door was badly damaged to a point where it was easier to remanufacture it in a birch ply. coated the edges of the door. You can also see that there was repairs done to the dashboard. I then cover it with an adhesive film. apply the veneer. At 
this point careful trimming of the outer edges to remove excess material. This can be very time consuming as the work must be carried out in a very accurate way. At this point any redesign work or accommodation of new switches can be carried out. This can be done to the customer's requirements. It's also possible for me to manufacture a completely new redesigned dashboard. For example for a kit car or in a situation where components have been moved or added to the original vehicle. This is the dashboard, more or less finished and ready for lacquer. This, this is the original veneer for this particular dashboard, which would have been cherry. This particular dashboard, as you can see, had quite a lot of water damage, mainly due to the fact it came from a convertible car which would have been prone to leaks around the windscreen area. Some of these original lacquers can be very difficult to remove and take a considerable amount of time. They must be completely removed to allow me to remove the old veneer prior to applying the new veneer as requested by the customer. At this point any damage or repairs can be done to the dashboard. Here you can see the finished articles, one done in cherry and the other one done in two different veneers, oak and walnut. template or your uh, test bed or your GT6 the interior strikes me it's a lovely red and the headlining looks new and everything else do you actually do that yourself or do you contract that out no I contract it out I, I I'm very fortunate to be able to work very closely with a um, well-respected upholsterer and together between us we can accommodate any customer's requirements for the interior of their car so you started out in motorbike restoration, I believe. Are you still involved in the motorbike world? I am very much. My heart has always been in motorcycles. And although in recent years I've concentrated on the car side of my business, motorcycles are a hugely important part of, of my life and of my business. And have you had anything interesting in the workshop of late? I had a very nice little BSA Bantam in um, not so long ago lovely restored very very nice machine just with a few wiring issues that needed to be sorted out and are you working on anything currently at the moment or i am just starting on a full overhaul of a triumph tiger cub engine which i'm hoping to have ready in the next couple of weeks for the client but what sets you apart from any other in the industry i offer my clients a unique range of services for their restoration. One of my memories from my own restoration was the feeling I had when I had to hand over my vehicle for paint and the how anxious I was that the vehicle would be treated in the way that I would treat it. I feel for my customers when they're handing over their vehicle that I want to assure them that I will treat their vehicle in the same way I would treat my own. I am an enthusiast, they are enthusiasts and we are all coming from the same place, I understand how they feel.